Hello folks. One of the issues that we face when we're doing our forecast is it can give us somewhat of a false sense of precision about the whole process. Now when we go through on our, our spreadsheet, we end up with our valuation for JB Hi-Fi in this case over 4571. And that, because of all of the inputs, can feel a bit more precise than it actually is. Now remember that this is really a probabilistic exercise. We're coming up with what we think is our best estimate, but there's some variation around that. So in this video, what I'm going to do is show you how to use Monte Carlo simulation in Excel to see the impact of changing some key assumptions. The assumptions that I'm going to vary for this video are the sales growth in the terminal year, profit margin in the terminal year, and cost of equity over the whole model. So what I've done is I've just taken a copy of our forecast and valuation tab and I've relabeled that as a new tab called sensitivity. So it's exactly the same valuation model that, we, that we've been working on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by setting up what I think could be the average and the standard distribution, sorry, the standard deviation for these three key variables. So I'll be using the 1.3% that we started off with. And I might say that that's going to have a standard deviation of say 0.5%. Uh, I'll then do the same thing for profit margin. I might give this uh, profit margin. I'll say the profit margin can have an average of 4.5%, standard deviation of 1.0%. And cost of equity capital was the 9.9% that we'd been using, and I'll give that a standard deviation of 1.5%. Now, what I'm now going to do is use our norm inverse function to generate uh, a value that we're going to use in our iterations. So what I'm going to start typing in here is equals N-O-R-M, and it's the inverse of the normal cumulative distribution is what I want. The probability is I'm going to select a random number in between 0 and 1. I'm going to use the standard, sorry, the mean that I'd set of the 1.3 and the standard deviation of 1 point, of 0.5%. And that's going to give me values that are going to change but in line with this distribution outline. So each time this number changes it will be from a distribution drawn with a mean of 1.3 and a standard deviation of 0.5. I'm going to do, I'll do the same thing. So I can copy those two cells and that will be drawing. So again inverse normal distribution uh, with a mean of 4.5, standard deviation of 1. Cost of capital, mean distribution of 9.9, .9, standard deviation of 8.8. .8. Now, to get the equity value, what I'm going to need to do is change a couple of these input variables. So the sales growth that I'm taking in 2027, I'm now going to draw from this reference cell. So the sales growth in 2027, I'm drawing from the reference cell, and if we've got this set up, the 2028 number should update automatically. Same thing for our operating profit margin. I'm now going to get terminal year profit margin coming from my reference cell. So I'll click enter. And finally, I'll scroll down. My cost of capital, instead of coming from the cost of capital tab, is now going to come from this reference cell. So that's going to change each time we update uh, or do anything significant to the spreadsheet, these numbers will change. What we now want to do is take the equity value that we're forecasting. So the equity value that we're getting from our DCF model, so equity value there, I'll hit enter. So we scroll back up and this is going to be what I'm going to be looking at. So what I now need to do, I've got the sort of the basic premise of the model set up. For my 1,000 iterations that I have here, I'm going to go equals equity value. So for each of these, I'm going to be taking the equity value as my starting point, and I'll hit enter. What I now need to do is set up a data table for the iterations 
and the equity value. So I'm going to go all the way down. I'll scroll quickly scroll down as fast as I can to the 1000 and I'll go back up. What I now need to do once I've got that uh, that data table ready to go, I want to go up to on my menu bar. I'm going to click on data. I'm going to go across to the what if analysis tab, what if analysis, and I'm going to click on data table. And I'm not so concerned about the row input cells. For the column input cells, I'm going to click on any column that's kind of outside of this data table. So let's just click over in somewhere in column W. And I'm now going to click on OK. What we see is, is that we now have the equity values of uh, are all filled out based on generations that we've got from this this set of mean and standard deviation setups for growth margins and cost of capital now just to get a sense of what we've got what i can do is get the maximum the minimum the average and the standard deviation of this distribution so i'll type in max and it's going to be t5 to t1004 and I'll now get the minimum of T5 to T1004. I can do the average of T5 to T1004. And I can do standard deviation T5 to T1004. So that gives me a sense of what this distribution is going to look like. What I now might do is if I've got all of this, so this is a range of outcomes, so rolling the dice a thousand times using these parameters. It's probably now going to be useful if I select all of these again. So I'll select my 1000, probably get the same results if we just did 500 and didn't have to go down so far. So. We've got our thousand iterations. Let's go back up to the top. I'm now going to graph this. So I'm going to click on insert chart. I'll scroll down to histogram and I'll click on OK. And I'll pop the kind of my chart along here. And I can tidy the chart up. Uh, JB high phi equity value. I can probably let me just get rid of and try and make this a little bit easy to see. So I'm going to kill the decimal places there because I don't think I need those. Um, and I could start playing around with different formatting options. Let's see if I make this chart a little bit larger. This gives us a sense of, uh, of the distribution that we've got. Um, yeah, so looks like the majority of values coming in in between about 36 and 41, 41 and 54 dollars. So what this gives us is a sense of whether we've got a long right tail or a long left tail, whether we've got a narrow or a wide likely set of values based on these inputs that we've taken. Now, once we've got this set up and working, um, we can obviously tidy the, um, tidy the chart up a little bit, but what we can now do is we can start changing these growth averages and standard deviations, and we'll see that this distribution that the chart itself is going to value change. So let's say that I think, well, I'm a little pessimistic about the growth, and the growth, in fact, could be 2% with a standard deviation of five. If I now type in 2%, you can see that we've got a few extra up at the right tail. We can see how this is sort of how this chart's changing. Or if I go back to 1%, again, we can see what impact that has. So it drops off those extreme right hand um, and, and pushes the whole distribution a little bit down to the left. Uh, so again, we can play around with each of these options just to get a sense of how sensitive the equity value is to changes in these key assumptions. So one advantage of doing it like this is that we're actually going to be changing all three at the same time. So we can change growth, we can change margins, and we can change the cost of capital at the same time rather than doing them one at a time and get a sense of how this varies. So again, this is how we can use you know, some Monte Carlo analysis relatively quickly and easily in Excel to try and do a bit of sensitivity on our valuation.